quite far. <laughs> I used to see her once every other year, maybe. But after she transitioned, she's with me all the time. She's still here. Welcome to Finding Your Spark Again After the Loss of a Loved One. Now, you'll see that I say that a different way every time because Finding Your Spark doesn't have a lot of restriction, right? Life dings us up and then we want to find it again. So today I have with me my guest, Aura Moldovan who is amazing and I am so blessed to get to be here with her. Aura Moldovan has always been an empath with an active extrasensory perception playing with energy, being able to see beyond the veil and having clairvoyant and trans channeling experiences. Her dream since childhood is to assist everyone to heal, remember who they are and regain the power from within themselves. She always wanted people to know how incredibly and infinitely powerful they are with no exceptions, that everyone has the power to heal themselves and alter their realities. And she wishes for everyone to live their lives in their extraordinary and complete glory. For the rest of her bio, please look below or wherever it is on the platform you're listening uh, because she is incredibly qualified and I'm really, really pleased to get to talk to her today. So welcome, Aura. Thank you so much, dear Donalyn. Thank you for everything, for all the work that you're doing. And it's such a pleasure and an honor to be here today. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. I'm really excited by today's topic, which is really about connection to self and loved ones after death, right? So this to me, these two things together, well, you can't get to one without the other pretty easily, you know? And so I love this topic. I love that we're going to talk about it because a lot of what I uh, talk about is about this world, right? Is about how we can connect to ourselves and make it through our emotional story and all of those things. Uh, but ultimately, understanding that the world is so much bigger than uh, it looks in our current reality is uh, is really a great thing to talk about. So I, I can't wait to hear, hear you, what you've got Absolutely. to say. Absolutely. Well, I found out throughout the years that if we are not connected to self, we're going to have a hard time connecting to anything other around us whether it is a living physical being or a loved one that has transitioned. And by connecting to ourselves and by getting into a state of listening, instead of having something to say, instead we relax and we listen, then we become receivers and then we can connect to everything that is around us, especially our loved ones who are always around us. And I think this is the fun part. I have told you earlier before that uh, after my grandma has passed, I am from Romania, but I live in Sweden, which is about 3000 kilometers away. I'm not sure what that is in miles, might be 1500 miles, something like that. <laughs> but uh, I used to see her once Really yeah, far. Yeah, quite far. <laughs> really far. <laughs> I used to yeah. see her once every other year, maybe. But after she transitioned, she's with me all the time. She's still here. She's always to my left side, always having something to say, always guiding me. And it's just magnificent. And it, it's mind-blowing to see also how how they change, how their personality is changing as they transition. There's just so many things to talk about on this topic. <laughs> Yes. Yes, yes, there is. I uh I love that you are having this active experience. Uh, I think one of the things that our listeners probably want to know is sort of what's the what's the process of getting to tap into that active experience. So you talked about getting quiet within yourself, being willing to listen. Um is there more to that process or is it really just a matter of then raising your awareness and and interpreting what you're feeling as uh as you as it makes sense to you it's 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 a bundle of things more or less 
it's about yes raising your awareness and rela relaxing and allowing to become a receiver but also being an observer because they show us different signs different things happen and also use your intuition and trust your intuition for instance uh, my grandma never liked smoking and she got me to quit by always turning the cigarette off or making me drop it into a puddle or making weird stuff happen which would nobody normally not happen and I always knew I felt her immediately and I thought oh my god it's grandma she's doing all of this she cleared me clearly tells me to stop listen to your dreams pay attention to your dreams and if you're again not dreaming just pay attention to your surroundings and trust your intuition the first thing that comes it's always the right thing but don't get into fear mm. that's the most important part to not get into fear there's so much that horror movies have been twisted over the past mm decades since they exist and the horror stories and so on and so forth and from my experience of since childhood since i can perceive spirits um i've never seen anybody scary or malef maleficent in any way um really there's just love and it's um you know, sometimes we get scared because it's like, oh my God, grandma doesn't know I have tattoos or, oh my God, grandma hates this. But funny enough, on the other side, they don't care about these things anymore. They just love you and they just love everything. They have such an expansive understanding of everything once they are free from the the physical form. It's, it's extraordinary. Mm. So this is a great segue into what changes right what changes when people pass so i know that my experience with this has been pretty profound for some people they've really changed a lot and uh, i think sometimes people can misinterpret that and say well it's not really them so can we talk a little about what is your experience with that and and what does it mean to to the personality that we know as grandma or mom or papa or whatever, whoever it is that's passed. So you mean how their personality is changing? Yes. Well, um, from everything that I've learned and every single soul that I came across that has changed both in the sessions that I'm having with my clients and my husband who has, his father has, um, I wasn't, I want to say transcended, which probably is not a wrong word because <laughs> they do have, they go through a process of expansion and it seems like they have access to everything, everything that has ever been, everything that is because you enter the quantum field and in this quantum field, you have access to absolutely everything and you gain such immense understanding for everything and acceptance and unconditional love that all of these things that you carried with you throughout the life just fade away as we come here as human beings we are born into certain roles that we need to play apparently to expand our um, experience as a soul and some of us want to experience i don't know being a criminal or doing bad stuff and or even some of our family members who are not you know the best to be around as much as we love them um, they can be really difficult but all of these experiences that they choose to have play a higher role for the expansion not only of their own soul but also the souls that are around them in that lifetime and as they cross over they change completely it's insane it was recently it was last year with my uncle who passed and he came and visited and he was free he told me i'm free now i'm ready to speak to my daughter which something that he could not do in his life as as he was here among us and they had beef <laughs> quite a lot of beef and now he was finally ready and he was saying I'm okay we're okay everything is fine I totally understand I see the bigger picture I never meant to hurt anyone 
and um, you know the entire family grew together with him from this experience. That is really beautiful. That is really beautiful. We, um, you know, a lot of times we hold on to those difficult times when someone passes, right? The sort of tendency is to go like, oh, my, this relation, part of the relationship wasn't very good, or there was always this thing between us, right? And so there's, there's this uh, tendency to go with the regret of not being able to fix something. But in fact, it's kind of a better place, a better time to fix things than ever before, because you're on, you're on a different plane and they're on a different plane as long as you go. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a rebirth in itself, both for the ones that transition and the ones that are still in the physical form. And I guess we just have to go with the flow. (laughs) Yes. But also I love that you're bringing up the rebirth process because, uh, we can, get this like, okay, the person is no longer in their body. They are somehow different, right? That becomes kind of obvious as you're walking through it, but we're still in our bodies and we're still sort of having the same life, right? Many people don't move immediately after they lose somebody that, right? So there, so a lot of the life looks the same. And to remember that we are not the same without somebody as we are with somebody, which means we are new. We are new in every moment. We're new in every moment, but it becomes really obvious when somebody's not there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Really cool. So talk to me a little bit about um how did this come to you? How did this being able to 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 see beyond the veil, to experience beyond the veil come to you? What was that like for you? Well, I guess I was born with it, and but it's really nothing special because if you come to think of it, so many children have imaginary friends, and so many of us. It was it came as a surprise to me. I just had a conversation with my sister, who is such a scientist. She's a medic, and she only believes in science. She doesn't believe in anything religion or anything outside of science, which she cannot prove physically <laughs> or fix physically, and. Um, she was telling me about how she used to hug trees and talk with trees and talk with all kinds of energies. And she had these beautiful imaginary friends, things that I would have never thought about her because she never spoke about it. And we have, we're born in the society that wants to put us into a special specific box to be a functional member of society, the way that I guess society needs it or the way that we are programmed to function as human beings and our parents tell us oh, stop imagining things come back down to earth uh, forget about these things and stop being weird you know and then you get you understand that you're weird and what you're doing is not okay especially as a child and you do want to fit in you don't want to get your parents angry especially when you're five or something like that at that age and all the way up to the age of five to seven so many of us remember these things and are even in touch with our past lives or are even in touch. It's it's absolutely magnificent. And so many of us don't even dare to talk about it. And then slowly after the age of seven, it fades away and we suppress it. We forget about it. We bring fear into it. But um, yeah, so it's nothing special. It's just for me, it never really went away. And the more I was pushing it away, the more it wanted me to to see it and to be there. And I was scared of it because it was normal. So I, I was in my house and all of a sudden I see by the pool this man from the 20s and uh, 1920s <laughs> dressed in 1920s clothes. And I didn't see through him or anything like that, just as I see you now or any other person or children or um, whatever. But um, they never want anything They they never do anything bad. If they bother you, it's because they are lost themselves and they don't really know what to do with themselves or what's happening. Some of them get lost like that. But um, yeah, it's something that it's always been there. And 
I just learned to work with it and I learned to accept it. But it took me two decades <laughs> to, to start accepting it and really working with it. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I love that you're sharing that. Thank you. Um, I know that with my own experience, it's funny that you're naming ages because when I think back about how I was raised, I was raised in the middle of nowhere. There was lots of land and lots of animals and not a lot of people. So, uh, you know, appropriate behavior wasn't really a thing that I learned uh, early on, you know, and I could go to school and stuff and not freak people out. But um, it really wasn't until I left home uh, at 15 and maybe I'm about 16 by the time I have an experience where I realize that I scare people and that just who I am and my ability to know what's coming next, my ability to tap in to the spirits around me, my ability to, to just be a part of what I think is the world, right? Because it's just larger like that. Um, is is absolutely frightening for people and uh and in my own journey that started the process of me shutting it all down right of just packing it away and being like no no i'm a normal person i am normal i am i am not extrasensory here you know um and i think that happens to all of us or many of us right and to be able to kind of bring it out into the light it's one of the things i love about this podcast is that um, I, I want to, to touch on many parts of this process, including this piece, because this piece is such a juicy, wonderful space that we can all have, right? But we have to be willing to let go of societal norms and um, being weird, right? We have to be weird. It's okay to be yeah. a little weird, right? Um, so I love that you're bringing that up. Well, the point is to be weird. Yeah. That's the thing. Because we are all unique beings. We are not supposed to be like anyone else. We're supposed to be like ourselves because this is how we grow. This is how we expand and learn from one another. Yeah, yeah that's right. And uh, yeah, this is also the beauty of souls and seeing all the different personalities that they can have, even when, as they transition, mm. how they change and how they tap into other versions of themselves. Mm. Now, you mentioned that as a, as a soul uh, transitions from physical to non-physical, there's a, ch a shift, a change in their demeanor. And um, this, I find, makes it much easier, actually, for us to get in touch, right? But it also means that we have to be willing to bring our own emotional condition into a new place. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, it absolutely comes with willingness and not being scared because the last thing they want to do is scare you, and especially if they love you so, so much and they feel if you're not ready. So they're not going to come and, you know, bulldoze over you in any way if you're not um, ready for them. If they still have things to teach or, um, I guess, guide you with, they will find a way to do so. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's it's all a matter of, of really trusting the process and trusting the fact that this is not for everyone. And this is not to tell, to convert anyone to anything. We all have our own beliefs and our beliefs create our everyday reality. If you believe that you can do something, then you can. If you can, if you believe that you cannot do something, then you can't. I always give the example of the black cat, right? The black cat crossing the path of someone. People usually say, oh my God, I'm going to have a bad day. And then you're going to have a bad day because you have this belief. And it's the same with our loved ones crossing over. If you believe that you can communicate with them and that they are communicating with you, then they are because we are magnificent creators of our reality. And it's just a matter of trusting yourself and trusting, trusting what is. Yeah. And trusting that, that, uh, that which is part of trusting yourself, but trusting that whatever it is that you think it is, it is right. Like I think about, yes. uh, the communication I've had with my, uh, my late husband and 
the jokes are so funny and I have to tell you I don't have that sense of humor it's like he is a word guy he's been a word guy since way before I met him and he's so smart and quick and and witty and he was that for all the time he was alive right in the human body but now things pop into my mind I'll be doing something and there will be a joke there will be a word joke right that comes and I think like I did not <laughs> access this in all of my years before this moment so I know and it's his sense of humor so I know it's his sense of humor and to be able to be willing to say like when I think that thought I'm willing to att attribute that to my my loved one right when I when I know that the cigarette keeps going out and I know that that's what she wants, then that's what I'm going to attribute it to. And in that way, we can stay in, in relationship, which is really incredible. Have you, beside the um, cigarette situation, uh, do you have other times that things have happened like that uh, where there's been like a real event, a real communication beyond my husband's jokes or whatever, right? Oh, it's so many times. It's um, pushing me towards my husband, also my grandma. She came in dreams telling me what to do and where to go. And just, she was like, he's the one, he's the one, go take, go. <laughs> Don't stop hesitating. <laughs> I love that. Or, um, uh, she's, she's just so funny in so many ways. Um, I can think of my husband, for instance, uh, after his dad passed, he had a car and uh, my husband took the car and the light for the seat belt to be put in was blinking and the car was beeping because there was a passenger next to him but there was no one there mm. and then he knew that it was his father sitting next mm. to him in the car <laughs> but you know the car was hey, feeling it the car was the car hey, knew <laughs> yeah yeah hey dad put your seat belt on put the seat belt on <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. If you're going to come and hang out with me in the car, you got to put your seatbelt on. <laughs> That's funny. That's really great. Exactly. That's really great. Now, uh, I will, you remind me of, and in fact, throughout this interview, these, uh, this time period has been really brought back to memory for me. Um, uh, so I think there's something here to uncover today. Uh, my, my brother-in-law, my husband's brother died. And he died uh, quite suddenly and violently and uh, many years ago. And when he died, um, my husband had a, a dream about him. And he yes. woke and said to me, I, I am going to tell the world, right, anyone else beside you, that I had a dream. But I did not have a dream. I spent time with my brother. That's what I just did. I was in some sort of reality that is not the same reality that I'm in right now, but I was spending time with him and we were, uh, he was leaning up against a car uh, that, that uh, Mark, his brother had, had owned when he was quite young and we were having a normal conversation right and then at one point he he didn't understand why things were happening the way they were happening and and my husband Tim had turned to him and said oh uh you, you're dead do you not know that you're dead and he said oh that would explain a lot that's oh the funny clothes and this and this and it was quite close to the time period where we were having we had already had some sort of memorial or something I'm actually I think his memorial was quite a bit later and so we but we had gone out right right at the beginning and so it was you know a few weeks after he died and that sense of like First of all, such a, a bond, a beautiful bond. And I know that happened with many people in, in, uh, in Mark's life, in my brother-in-law's life. Uh, but also uh, that we can do with that what we need to do with that, right? That spirits don't always know what's happening. And sometimes they need to be told what's happening. And that's, I think, where you get into the don't get scared part, right? Yeah. It, they can be scared, Right, they can be a little scared. Yeah, 
I think many times it, it happens quite often that they're not aware that they are transitioning. And <laughs> I was thinking, if, I don't know if I'm not going, getting into scary territory now. Um, <laughs> we can always say I know it. from my own sessions. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, children, for instance, if they if they cross over in in ways unexpected ways um they might find themselves alone and not find their parents and they just attach themselves to a female that walks by or finds herself in the nearby uh, area of where they have crossed over and they find that it's the same energy that their mom has had and they attach to it there are many ways that they can get confused and um lost and i think that yes it's it's always it's it's um it comes from both sides we help one another realize what's going on and understand what is happening because you know they can go many places they they have infinite possibilities that they can travel to and time doesn't exist in the linear way for them as it does for us and so i think it's important to to help them understand sometimes if they especially if we realize that they're lost that um, you know they have transitioned and it's okay and uh, that we're okay and mm. that yeah mm. nice oh, yeah. and it's also this thing that many of them hang around or don't really move on in spirit because we hang on to them very tightly and they want to remain and comfort us um, so I think it's, again, a both-way path to understand that this transition has happened and that so-called death is not a death because the soul still lives on and it's never a loss. It's, I think that this word is so poorly chosen for this entire experience because they are more with us than they have ever been before. And they become omnipresent. They um, right. They are literally they more. They expand in so many. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And therefore, we are more because we are connected yes. to them. Yeah. It, it doesn't quite seem right to go all the way to, uh, I had a gain, but... It is, in fact, more true yeah. that I had a loss, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I can say that with the loss of my grandma, I have gained my health back. I have her with me all the time. She makes crazy jokes. Uh, you know, she's always not on my back, but she's always here. And I don't really feel like it's a loss at all. It's a gain. And we, we gain freedom in so many ways. They gain, gain their freedom and we gain our freedom from maybe a lifetime of suffering with a certain loved one, which uh, after the transition, they come and explain things to us of why they did th things in a certain way and how they never meant it. And then everybody gets a beautiful closure um, out of this whole thing. I was thinking just now of how Dacians, uh, which is the ancient Romanian people, kind of like the ancient Egyptians, we had the ancient Dacians. And the ancient Dacians, they used to mourn at births and celebrate at death because they found that the soul was being trapped in a body and had to withstand the pain and the suffering of living a human life. And when they would transition, it would be freed again. And I found that to be quite a, an interesting way of seeing things and perceiving this completely the other way around. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. I was thinking uh, when you were talking about that, about how uh, I really want to start another podcast because I'm like a podcast maniac. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and really, it's about talking about that death process and how spectacular it is because it's such an amazing time period and the process itself. We have so much control over that and as the person going through it and uh, and also 
as the participant for the person who's leaving, right? As, as somebody who's watched my father go through that and watched my friend's mother go through that. And right, all of those times we have all this uh, spectacular, amazing, miraculous kind of things happen. And we just go like, that probably didn't just happen, <laughs> right? Instead of going, yeah, let's have a celebration. Let's have a celebration. Yeah. So uh, yes, I, we'll, exactly. we'll come back around to that topic another time, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, uh, this, this idea of being connected to yourself in order to be able to be aware enough, really, is that the key piece that if we don't tap in, then there's no way for us to to sort of quiet things enough to notice the subtleties? Yes, absolutely. Because it's all about, this is just science. It's all about the different brain waves that we go through throughout the day. And as human beings, especially now in the past hundred years, we have been so much in this stress, fight or flight mode all the time because of work, because of all these different things that are happening in our everyday lives and so we are in a beta state of mind all the time in a very anxious uh, stressful uh, concern critical judgmental mind state of mind yes <laughs> and what is necessary for us is to bring our entire system down a few notches and the only way to do it is by relaxing and by going within. This is how we give our body time to readjust to itself because the body is in, in a constant flight mode. It's what happens to animals, for instance. Animals are in this state, but only in the moment that they fear that they feel that um, danger is around. And then this subsides and they go back to their natural state of relaxation, of just going about their lives without any stress. Whereas we are in this constant state of mind, which is detrimental to our health, is detrimental to absolutely everything. And when we relax our bodies, when we dive within ourselves, we become way more perceptive. The heartbeat, our entire nervous system, everything works more co coherently and more uh, harmoniously with everything and as our energy harmonizes we can pay attention to everything that is around us and get out from the mind and into the heart mm. and that's when we can perceive everything mm -hmm. and when we trust 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 <laughs> yes 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 yeah that's right when we're uh so when we're moving from beta to alpha and moving down that scale mm -hmm. into theta is there a specific place yeah. that you feel like, okay, this is sort of the ideal space to be in, in terms of brain waves, to, in order to uh, still have enough awareness that you haven't completely gone to sleep and, uh, mm. and, and yet be in a really receptive mode? Yeah, it's usually the lower alpha. I think even a high alpha would be okay uh, because we are creative in a higher alpha brain state. And when we have creativity, creativity is our imagination and our imagination is our higher self or soul or true essence that speaks through us. And this is how everything in the quantum realm communicates through us and with us. And when we are just an alpha state is enough if you can get yourself relaxed because now also when we talk to each other well i'm in the beta state and you're in the alpha state as you're listening and this is enough right you are a listener you are the receiver you're just taking in whatever comes your way and it's enough to just bring yourself down you don't have to put yourself to sleep it's <laughs> going down the theta to delta that's not necessary but i do receive quite a lot of messages that way and then maybe meditation can help right in the morning when you wake up or right before going to bed because that's when you are in this alpha theta state 
where the brain waves are way slower and you are able to receive more of what is around you and what is within you. And I think also something that many of us are getting, again, upside down is that we keep perceiving, we keep waiting for answers to come outside of ourselves. Many times they use our own inner voice and our intuition to talk through us. So go within, don't go without, because within is everything. Within you is the entirety of all that is. And as you start to learn this, this is how you start to connect with your loved ones, with your guides. Many of them are your loved ones that have transitioned because they are an extension of you. I was also thinking of my grandma or even my husband's uh, father, as they passed, they started seeing their loved ones around their bed or the weeks before, the months before. And um, uh, wide awake, I was with my grandma talking to her and she was telling me, hey, Radu is there in the door next to you. I wasn't seeing him, but I asked her about him. Okay, and how is he? And is everything okay with him? And she said, yes, he's here. He's going to help me transition. Mm. Very calm, very... Mm. (laughs) She wasn't in a state of fear or anything like that. Um, But this was when she was calm and relaxed. Then she was getting in state of fear when she would go back to her head And she started to think, oh my God, what is your mother going to do without me? How are you going to survive without me? And all these things that would kick in the fear. Mm. So Mm. out of the head, into the heart. And this is how we can um, start to perceive and receive. Mm. Lovely. So I have two two questions for you. One, well, it's not really a question. One is, uh, my mother in law went through that. She she uh, she had a stroke and a very bad accident. She was paralyzed for several years. She was bedridden, and uh, she would say quite often, uh, "So and so's here. So and so's here." All people who had passed away. Why isn't so and so here? And things like that. And I know that. Uh, <laughs> that that um, the people, some of the people around here really, it upset them greatly. And of course, other people said, well, probably they're doing something else, like looking over someone else and <laughs> they'll be there when you go, you know, that kind of thing. And um, so I think that's really not uncommon. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just ask you is, do you have a personal practice that... Um, that helps you to get into that receptive mode. I mean, uh, it, it could be a daily practice or it could be literally I'm going to set some time aside to to spend with non-physical, uh, whatever you'd like to share. Yeah, I. it actually started a few years ago uh, when I had to force myself to do it because I used to... I used to listen to guided meditations and that's how I would get there. But then I decided, okay, I can do this myself. I don't need a guided meditation. And I would just sit for 10 minutes every day and breathe. And whatever thought comes my way, it's fine. So no judgment. If I need to, I don't know, turn off the oven or whatever thought that would come my way, just gently brush it away, acknowledge it, brush it away and return to the breath and go within, just concentrate on the heartbeat and the breath. And as I was doing that within, I think three weeks, so patience is also another key aspect of this entire process. Um, I just felt uh, a wave of love, a wave of unconditional love pouring over me. And I I started crying. (laughs) I released so much. I couldn't believe this beautiful, beautiful love that just came over me out of nowhere. And I know that it came from inside. And one thing that we have to remember is the inside is the outside and the outside is the inside as within, so without, as above, so below. And so try not to to question things too much. Again, out of the head, into the heart. If you feel, oh my God, grandma's here, then don't ask, is it grandma? Is it grandpa? Is it someone else? (gasps) Should I be scared? No. 
grandma's here, stay with it, focus on that thought, and maybe feel grandma. Think of her. I'm just saying grandma now. Think of her hands. Think of her, whatever reminds you of her, a scent, a smell, um, whatever senses that you might get, because it's all about activating the senses also. Meditation is not doing nothing. Meditation is a lot of work. <laughs> and focusing. Meditation as hypnosis as well is a very relaxed body and a very focused mind. And focus on whatever, have intentions if you want to. I think that's another good thing. Right before meditating, have the intention that I would like to connect with so-and-so. And if it doesn't happen in this moment, keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And just allow yourself to let go, to trust, and whatever comes your way, uh, that's it. And you don't have to sit for an hour. You don't have to. I started with 10 minutes every day. And then one day I just looked at the clock and half an hour had passed and I didn't even realize it. So... Yeah, part of that letting go of reality, right, of like is the oven on and all that, I think is also connected to that sense of time. Oh, I'm, I have 10 minutes. I have two minutes. That's it, you know, and that sort of goes and you get to be really present. That's lovely. That's really lovely. Well, Aura, it is such a joy to have you here today. I want to let our listeners know that, of course, Aura is a coach and a practitioner, and you should definitely contact her. Uh, we'll make sure all the links are there on the platform that you're listening on. And um, she's, oh, she's got tons of ways you can work with her and everything. So uh, we'll, we'll put all that in. And please let us know what you think of this conversation. So... Put a comment. Tell us, have you had similar experiences? Does this seem way out to you? What do you think? Do you want to hear more about this kind of thing, right? Uh, so thank you so much for bringing all this out into the light and for us to really get to say it out loud, finally. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. It's such an honor.